Welcome back. It is 1440. We are entering a new decade. I hope you liked the recap in the last one. Let me know if you like that format. If we could do a little more, I don't know. But anyway, we are here. We have Thomas. We just married Genevieve off to Cassian. And we have other Thomas, Adelaide's. We're still doing the winery stuff. And we are just moving along nicely. So in this part, we'll hear more about Genevieve and Cassian. And their story and all of the stuff that is going on with them. Uh, and it will, you know, impact everyone. <laughs> so I hope you're excited for that. We'll also do the war rolls. I'll do them the same way that I did them last time. So that'll be good. And then uh, we have vampire hunting. And then when Johnny comes back from war, if he comes back from war, um, if he survives his young adult role. Because we messed up the roles last time. I don't know. Should I give him the adult roll uh we'll just we'll just do young adult again um so yeah i messed that up last time so ignore ignore that but we'll we'll see if he survives and if he survives the war and if he can get married <laughs> so all of that stuff is happening so let's start with um our child ages up we have Feliz and florian they can't get a nine or a 19 so the both of them oh no florian Okay, well, we still have one land grab boy, but we're running very low on them. <laughs> so for young adults, we have three. We have Jaquette, Johnny, and Frida. So they can't get a 2, 6, 11, 13, 14. Okay, he survived. She survived? He survived? I don't know. Okay, the last person died. It was just Frida. Sorry, Frida. I don't mean just Frida. But anyway, we now have Emil becoming an adult. He has to roll a nine or higher. I can't even look at Emil. No! <laughs> okay, well, your kids are going to live at the church for the rest of their lives. Emil, uh, he followed Serena and left their children behind. Okay, so Wybert has to roll a ten or higher, which he did not. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This decade is starting off good, huh? Uh, we have can't get a nine on Salvia and can't get an 18 on Wybert. They are both fine. Okay, so I am going to do the war rules uh, like I did last time. And then uh, we are going to hop into the story. So let's do it. Let's start the war rules. So they cannot get an 18. That is the, the rule. So first we're going to have Pascal Devereaux, and he survived. He got a 10, so that is really exciting. He survived, and there we go. He has won the fight. Then we are going to head off to Maurice Trimboli. Maurice is, um, I think both Maurice and Pascal, neither of them had kids. But anyway, so Maurice is next, and he is going to fight and he luckily did get a three so he survived as well i don't know what i'm going to do after i kill emil because i am using him for so many things during this war time and in this episode you'll see i'm using him as like generic soldier or whatever so i i am gonna need to make a new one eventually but anyway so that is him Maurice Trimboli did survive. So after Maurice, we then have uh, Kathasach Heathcliff. So here he is, and he is going to come and fight. And as you can probably guess from the orientation of this um, of this fight, he rolled an 18. And this means he did not survive his role. So Kathasach, who he actually, he his wife just recently passed as well, and they never had any kids, so I guess it's not that much of a loss. Uh, but he uh, he was Cassian's uh, relative there, so he can't help Cassian with whatever is going on in this, this video. And then lastly, we have Johnny Zest II, who has rolled an 11. So he survived his role as well, even though he they both dropped their swords there. But we're just going to say that everything turned out 
fine. They both did a great job. So now we're going to head home. And um, unfortunately, since I was doing the war stuff, we missed our opportunity to get anything from our garden today, but that's okay. We are going to have Adelaide and Thomas both working on the nectar making, and then we'll have uh, Thomas the second who is working on his writing and stuff. So everyone is just doing some stuff. We are going to go over and see Genevieve in the later half of this day, but I just wanted to start here at our household. And um, then I was thinking, you know what? I think that we should have Thomas be in contact with some more Sims. Maybe I haven't decided yet exactly who sh he should marry and all that. So let's talk to some of our contestants again. We have Odelgard, who is currently the one who is closest in age to him, which is actually a really important thing. Um, you know, the other girls are still too young. Uh, they're still children. So um, if we want to get him married sooner rather than later, Odelgard actually might be our best bet because she is um, she's around the same age as him. The only thing is, though, is that she is, I mean, her family is not poor per se. And the Bennett reputation has definitely been improving. But, um, you know, she she did roll not to have any children. I don't know about that, but she did roll not to have any children, and also she, um, you know, she's she's not going to help us increase our status in society, I guess. So I'm not sure if that would marry to Thomas, but I think it might marry, marry, matter <laughs> to Thomas, but uh, it could end up mattering to other people in the family you know they've worked so hard to get ahead and especially Genevieve who's a snob might not think that she's good enough for her brother so that is something we have to consider I want you to let me know what you think about our different options honestly it's really it's Odelgard and then um El Rosaria is the Payne household and she is definitely um a good option as well she is wealthy um it's just that there's a bit of an age gap so other than that we not until 1444 are some of the other girls aging up so i feel like it's between those two anyway so it, on to our story we have genevieve here she is almost in her third trimester of pregnancy and she is here with her husband and uh, they are just chatting and so now that they're married he is going to kind of come to her and say hey like so now that we're married, you know you can tell me anything. You know, you can tell me about what happened with your father about and with you. And she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, and he's like, come on. Like, I know everyone knows that your father somehow came back to life. That was, you know, everyone was talking about it. And even though Gilbert never said anything, like, obviously rumors go around. And he goes, and then, you know, you had a, an illness a couple of years ago. And she's like well, why would you think that my illness had anything to do with that? And he basically tells her that, remember Celestina? I know that we were talking about whether or not we were going to have her be a kind of a bad guy, but she did come to Cassian and she did tell him that there was supernatural happenings in the house. She was hoping that after Gilbert died that maybe Cassian would step in and do something about it. So he tells Genevieve, hey, like, you know, there's some accusations against your family. Like, you have to tell me the truth so that I can help you so that we can get through this together. And so she ends up telling him, well, my mother was able to find out about this vitality nectar. It has the ability to bring back the dead. But it's really just, you know, there's just uh, the death flower. It does the thing. And, you know, she's basically, you know, she doesn't really know the science behind it. Obviously, she never made nectar in her life. But uh, she is going to just tell him a bit about it and what happened there and all of that stuff. So then later that night after she had told him all this stuff and they kind of, you know, she went to bed and he is going to sneak out at night so he is not going to send anyone else because he doesn't want anyone else to know this big secret and of course we know that Cassian is kind of like a um like a con man in a way like he's very good at figuring things out and kind of getting a leg up on everybody else through kind of manipulative or tricky ways so he is going to come here he's going to sneak into their like basically unguarded <laughs> workshop um and go into the the cellar and find the vitality nectar which obviously 
you know, stands out with its own special place. So he is going to come in by himself in the dark of night and steal the vitality nectar. So that is what's happening here. Cassian is trying to, you know, he wants to protect. Why did you take the toddler with you? <laughs> um, he wants to, you know, protect himself, maybe protect his lineage. Um, he, I'm sure he wouldn't mind living forever if he could. I don't know how long that would work for with Vitality Nectar. Like, I don't know if it makes old people how long it works for and how many bottles he would need. He doesn't know either, but he is definitely, um, you know, he wants that for himself. And he's a kleptomaniac, so of course he's going to go steal and steal it. Also, don't pay attention to the fact that Felice doesn't have a makeover. <laughs> anyway, so I'm just going to put this in the secret vampire room that we had for Eleanor when she was here. So nobody really is familiar with this room. Gilbert did a good job of hiding it when he was hiding um, Eleanor that time. So... Anyway, he's going to sneak back up to bed at like five in the morning. Genevieve is already like trying to get up <laughs> for the day. So um, she is feeling pretty good. She is very pregnant. And we are going to just have her kind of be like, oh, like, and he's just going to be like, oh, yeah, I, I had to get up and use the restroom or something. <laughs> and now he. Uh, so she is going to be down here. And in the morning, what ends up happening after we wait until it's a socially acceptable time to do things. Um, I'm going to change her clothes. And, you know, presumably she has like a maid who changes her clothes and stuff. But anyway, so in the early morning, we have our brother, Thomas, come over. So Thomas is going to come over. Also, I forgot that I had to stop her from going to school. So we're going to grab her in just a second because she's trying to leave. You can't leave. Don't leave. <laughs> So, um, we have her and we are going to, um, ignore a call from mom. Okay. So she is going to talk to Thomas. She's going to invite him in and he's there early in the morning and she's like, Thomas, what's going on? And he's like, oh my gosh, Genevieve, you'll never believe what happened. Like, so he is basically going to tell her there was a break in last night. All of the vitality nectar was stolen. Do you think that so obviously Cassian didn't do a good job of make, hiding what he was trying to take. <laughs> but he's basically going to tell her, like, so all the vitality nectar was taken last night. Like, can you believe it? And she is just, like, immediately suspicious because she mentions it. And then the next day it's gone. Like, she's like, that's a little suspect. <laughs> so they're talking and she's like, well, let me look into it. Let me get to the bottom of it. And he's like, Genevieve, what do you think? Like, what are you thinking? And she says, the truth is, yesterday I told my husband about the Vitality Nectar, and now it's gone. So I'm going to do some investigating in my own household and try and figure out exactly what's going on. I hope that it's not the case, and it's just a crazy coincidence, but it might not be. So uh, why don't you go home, and I will let you know. And he's like, okay, well, be careful just in case. And so she is going to start searching the house. We're going to look in these drawers in the bathroom. We're going to look over here in the kitchen, this, that, and the other thing. You know, she's just searching throughout the house. And so eventually she figures her way into the secret room and she opens up the, the storage here and she sees the vitality nectar and she's like, oh my gosh, it was him. It really was him. And she is just fuming. You know, she's hot headed. She's like immediately going to start in on him. Like, I told you about this yesterday. You stole it. Like, how could you? How could you betray me like this? We're supposed to be partners. Like, we're, you know, if something had happened to you, of course I could have convinced my mom to, like, do something. You didn't have to take it. And they're just basically arguing back and forth. And so uh, we have to fix everyone's needs because they're all unhappy. But, yes, yeah, so she's just, like, arguing with him, and they're having this really nasty conversation. And he's like, honey, I did it for us. Like I was trying to protect our family. And she's like, my parents and my brother are our family. And so he realizes that his like excuses aren't really working very well. So he's going to start being mean and he's going to say, look, do you know how much trouble that your parents can get in for this kind of stuff? You know, after all of the problems that we're having with vampires in the past and all of the supernatural stuff that had been going on in this area, you think that 
you know, they're going to be spared. You're lucky that I took it because I can now, you know, put this rumor to rest and that people aren't going to have to know and all of that stuff. So they're basically arguing with each other. And he basically says to her, like, you can't do anything about this because your family will probably get executed for be doing supernatural stuff. And she gets so worked up that she goes into labor. So she has just gone into labor from all of this like stress and arguments and everything. And luckily both her and the baby survived. I'm so happy. We are going to name the son Jeremiah. So uh, we now have a spare for Cassian. He now has two sons, which is really good. And yeah, so they are definitely, um, you know, she is happy that she had successfully had the baby and that there was no, um, you know, she was really worried when all of a sudden her water broke and she was in labor. So she's going to talk to him and she kind of is realizing that this isn't going to go well for her. So she basically says to Cassian, look like, you know, and he, they're, they're both kind of trying to calm the other down. Like he is, I mean, she's enraged. I got to fix that. But he is basically telling her, I don't want anything to happen to you. Like if I knew that you were going to get this worked up, blah, blah, blah. And she's just kind of like, no, you're right. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get so worked up. Like you're right. We have to protect our family. We could have lost our baby. And so um, the apologize in bed interaction went away. So that was unfortunate, but I am going to have them, you know, apologize in bed and we are going to get her pregnant again because she had two baby tries with him. So I do want to get her pregnant again because of what I'm also going to do shortly. <laughs> we won't have another chance to have a baby with him. <laughs> um, okay. So she is now pregnant again. We're going to take care of the baby and she is just thinking about what she's going to do. So she sends a letter to, Thomas and she basically tells him look he's threatening our family I have placated him for now but we have to figure out what we're going to do and I have a plan but it could be dangerous and I hope that everything turns out okay so she is going to I'm going to put her here because I forgot to take a picture of her with this and um, I'm trying to take more screenshots <laughs> of story progression things so that I can include it in our recaps we'll see how that goes but don't hold me to it anyway so she sends out some notices and some letters. And so one of the things that she has done is she's written to like, you know, quote unquote, the crown or like whichever higher noble is in the area, probably Malcolm Landgrab, to be completely honest with you. Um, she probably is, would reach out to Malcolm Landgrab. So uh, she reaches out to him and basically tells him, I suspect my husband of being involved in supernatural occurrences and all of that stuff. And so um, she's basically going to write him a letter like that. And then it's May Day, so everyone is trying to pretend that everything is normal. So Genevieve and Cassian go out to, you know, greet their their subjects and go out to spend some time doing the holiday stuff. So they're out here and they are going to uh, just be enjoying the festival and so she actually is going to slip some poison in his food and she wants to do this in a public area because she doesn't want there to be any question that he died she wants everyone to know that he was previously dead <laughs> right so he is going to die right here and look at all these people that are seeing what's happening and she's just like, oh my gosh, like my husband, somebody do something and blah, blah, blah. And so, you know, obviously probably a doctor comes or whatever and says, you know, he, he's dead, he's died. And then they come and take away the body and whatever. So uh, she is going to head home. She has just killed her husband um, in public. And so she has done that and then we're going to head back to the house and I'm just going to take care of the baby. She's also pregnant again, which is excellent. She's actually pregnant again with another boy, which I'm really excited about. So there, there is that. But yes, so Cassian's grave and ghost are here. Come back to the house. You know, some time has passed and his ghost comes back to the house and he comes and he gets a bottle of Vitality Nectar to bring himself back to life. And he you know, he just does that. So here he goes. He is alive again. So he has come back to life and 
he is going to come up here to Genevieve and be like, I know that you killed me. I know that it was you. What did you think you were going to accomplish? You know I have the vitality nectar now. And she's just like, oh, you know. <laughs> um, but anyway, so they're arguing. And he's like, look, I'm going to have you executed for this, for trying, for murdering me and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, I'm going to have your whole family executed. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And she's like, yeah, you can try. Go ahead and try it. And so they're arguing with each other. And he ends up um, intimidating her and kind of locking her in this extra room here. So we're going to put her in there and lock the door. But remember, she had sent that letter. And everyone in town had seen Cassian get well, not get murdered, and they didn't know he was murdered, but he they saw him die. So him just all of a sudden being around again, poor Ella is like, what is happening in this household that I am a part of? <laughs> but anyway, so uh, because Genevieve had kind of set this up so that everyone knew, then we have, please do not get enraged. <laughs> you can't die. Well, she's pregnant. She can't die anyway. Um, okay, so then Malcolm of course, sends some soldiers. Thank you for, for always being there for me, Emil, as generic soldier number one. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Nancy is trying to get back with Cassian. Anyway, so um, Cassian is here, and um, he basically, the soldiers invade his house and, like, kind of beat him down and tie him up, and they're like, you know, you know, fan out, search the house. And, and so they come around and they eventually find all of the nectar and they confiscate it. And we are going to do a roll for the war like we did earlier for each sim in our household and in our main household because they are all, you know, quote unquote accomplices. So Ella rolled a 17. She's OK. Cassian has rolled a three, he will live. There will be consequences. Genevieve rolled a nine, 13. Okay, so far, so good with no 18s in our household. So they have all, you know, ransacked the house, you know, tied Cassian up and are, are heading to jail, like bringing him to jail. Meanwhile, they're going to the Larkin household. Now, this was the part that I was so scared about. I was like, you know what? It would be just my luck for Thomas II to roll to die. <laughs> in this encounter um but if that's what happens that's what happens so we are here and we are going to go first to thomas the elder he survived the ordeal adelaide also survived and then thomas also survived okay so nobody actually was killed as a result of this except for cassian who came back to life so um anyway <laughs> The soldiers are doing their investigation and they are trying to figure out everything. Meanwhile, they're taking Cassian away. Um, and so they are going to strip him of his title and they are going to basically uh, now it is making little little Cassian the Lord, even though he's a toddler, <laughs> although he's aging up into a child next year, but he's a Lord. And so basically, you know, during all of this, so now we're back in our household, we're just going to get back to stuff and Genevieve is going to come and visit us in the morning. But, um, so what's happening is that, so Cassian is arrested. He's stripped of his titles. He's stripped of everything that he has, and it's all given to his son. So it's, it wasn't enough that, you know, they're not taking out the whole family. Like, it's not like the the issue that we had where the Armstrongs came in and the Bennets were out because all of their family was illegitimate because of, of that. So, um, but because Cassian II is not illegitimate, honestly, who even is Cassian II's mother? I forget. <laughs> Let's find out. Uh, Cassian II, uh, his mother is... Oh, his mother is Sabina. Okay, so since his mother is Sabina, is an Armstrong, he is in line, he is noble, he is a good candidate to be in the next, you know, everything. So it's it's okay that he inherited everything. And basically, through these correspondences that um, Genevieve and, and Malcolm have been having, they... Um, they 
basically say that Genevieve now has full control over the estate and everything. She's like the regent um, in charge of of little Cassian and the area. So Genevieve has just gotten a promotion. <laughs> uh, she is now very much uh, in charge and doing great. And so she is very, um, in you know, in good shape. So she is happy about that. And she is feeling good. She is now in charge uh, through little Cassian. And if little Cassian dies, I mean, I don't know. You have to let me know. If little Cassian dies, would we have our, excuse me, our son become the next Lord? Would that work? Or because the child was Cassian and Genevieve's? Would they not be able to inherit a lordship? I don't know. We'll have to see how it goes. Anyway, Genevieve is now here in the morning and she has come to see Thomas and she is, you know, talking to him in person and she's going to tell him everything that happened and that, um, you know, she's now in charge. She's also pregnant again. Hopefully one of her sons survives <laughs> so that, um, you know, she can keep control over the position. I'm not sure yet whether it would work if it was just her son, but we'll, we'll see. We'll talk about that in the comments. So anyway, uh, we're also going to check out the house. Okay. And we'll plant one more thing and we're good. Okay. So we are in good shape here and we are going to basically end here. We're going to now be uh, selling some stuff so that we can get more land for our estate, which is great. Um, we're doing a really excellent job of keeping that up. So I'm happy about that. And we are going to then head out to, uh, first off, I forgot to do a couple things, to be completely honest with you. Um, so I need to move all the guys from the war back into their households, which I totally 100% forgot about. So Pascal, time to go home. Um, Maurice, you too. And then Johnny. So actually, Wybert did pass. So Wybert... Um, died and because of that it means that salvia is now available so salvia is now available um also johnny is going to be marrying jaquette but yes um i do want to try and get salvia married again at some point because she is our only vampire so it, you know our only way to get vampires is for her to have kids so that is is important but yes so we're just going to give Jackette um, a little bit of a makeover unfortunately uh, Johnny rolled not to have any children so who knows I really do have to go back through and see who can have kids and who can't but um, anyway so they are now going to get married she has six tries left even though I mean, just in case and we're going to get them in here I also have to update some of these these things but anyway so who could she marry let's see bard axdell malcolm landgrab and wolfram bennett are all available um but some of them are kind of old <laughs> uh even malcolm is kind of old by now i think malcolm has a an age up coming up soon doesn't he malcolm 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 no yes actually i don't know Oh, no, he's dying in 1451 is what's happening. And he's only got one son. <laughs> uh, he's only got one son, and that is Benedict, I believe. Or not Benedict. What's what's the baby's name? Hold on, let me look. Uh, okay. Yeah, Benedict. I was right. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to get them married really quick. Also, it was such a hardship <laughs> for me to uh, do all of this. They did not want to stay still. And that, so I'm going to kill the rest of the Sims off screen and everything. But anyway, yeah. So Malcolm has had so many kids. Let me just go through them with you really quick. So like with uh, Aelis, he had Arthur who died. I'm just going to go through the boys. Benedict, who's still alive. And Florian, who died. With 
um, Isabel, he had Malcolm II, who died. And with Winifred, he had only girls. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Benedict is, is the only one. Maybe we should remarry him because he does have some time left before before he dies. So we can still get some land grabs out of him. But anyway, that's where we're going to wrap up. I hope that you enjoyed this. I have so much fun in these like storytelling adventure ones um, where, you know, we have a little bit of danger. It was only a one in 20 chance of danger, but still it was danger. And I was uh, having a lot of fun with this. So I hope that you guys are excited. Um, the 1440s are going to be really exciting. We have, of course, another uh, five-year section of war from 1445 to 1450. So that'll be really exciting. Um, what else do we have coming up? Uh, we have, of course, we have Thomas's marriage. Uh, Thomas actually, the... Elder Thomas is going to be getting married, not married. Oh my gosh, I can't even talk. The Elder Thomas is going to have a birthday next year. <laughs> really scary and important. Um, and then Genevieve is going to have her young adult birthday in 1443. And of course, Thomas, our Thomas, will be having a birthday in 1444. Whew. So I hope you guys are excited. And I will catch you in the next one.